Hey guys, in this video, we're doing a tutorial on Ableton's operator synth, which is this guy right here. So operator comes with Ableton Suite and it's Ableton's FM synthesizer. So in this video, I'm just gonna go over the front panel and explain what all the buttons and knobs and little widgets do. All right, before we get into the interface, let's talk about FM synthesis at a really high level. So FM just stands for frequency modulation and you can replace the word modulation with the word change. So we're just dealing with a change in frequency of one oscillator using another. And the easiest way to visualize this is picture an LFO which is a really slow oscillator. If you assign an LFO to control the frequency of an oscillator, you'll hear the change in pitch like giving you vibrato effectively. But as the rate of the LFO increases into audio rate, you stop perceiving the actual changing pitch and instead you start hearing a change in timbre which is the overall character of the sound. So the goal of FM synthesis is the same as any other synthesis type. We're just trying to achieve a different change in timbre over time to make the sound interesting. So in a subtractive synth, which you're probably familiar with, you start with a really rich wave, something that has lots of harmonics, and then you subtract the harmonics by running it through filters. Whereas in an FM synth, we start with really simple waveforms like sine waves, and we use the properties of audio rate frequency modulation to create the change in timbre. The word operator is a general term used to describe the combination of the oscillator, an envelope, and its own dedicated amplifier. So the difference between an operator and an oscillator is that in a typical synth, like a subtractive synth, you have a very simple oscillator, like something that generates a sine wave or a saw wave. And then you have a shared envelope and a shared amplifier for the whole synth. Whereas an operator, you can almost think of as a mini self-contained synthesizer where you have the oscillator and it has its own amplifier and envelope. So you can change the level of that oscillator independently of the others. And the Ableton operator synth has four different operators to use. And the other term you'll hear in FM synthesis is the word algorithm. And that just describes how the four different operators are interconnected between each other. So you don't have to have all four operators audible. You can have some of them just used as modulators. And again, you can replace the word modulator with changer if you want. And it's just the operator that is used to change the frequency of another. All right, so now that we have the basics down, let's go over the interface and see how things are laid out. So you'll notice this box in the middle, and that's called the display. Around the display is what's called the shell, so everything on the left and on the right. The shell gives you really simplified high-level parameters that you want to change for all the different modules. And then depending on which module you click on, the display will change to give additional information for that particular module. So the display is contextual. And then the way things are laid out is that you have your four operators on the left side here, A, B, C, D, starting from the bottom. And then on the right, you have an LFO, you have a filter section, you have a pitch envelope and pitch control section, and then you have a general global section down here. All right, let's start off with the operator section on the left here. So each operator can be toggled on and off independently with these little boxes here. So I'm just gonna toggle A for now. So the shell parameters for A, you have the coarse tuning, which effectively just sets the octave and it's an integer multiplier of the fundamental frequency. And then you have a fine tune knob, which is an inharmonic multiple. So you get smooth pitch changes. The fixed button allows you to disconnect the oscillator from the keyboard so that it's always producing a constant pitch regardless of what you're playing. And in that case, you get frequency control and then a multiplier of that frequency. So you can set any kind of like specific frequency you want. And then on the right, you have the level of that specific operator. So if you remember, the operator includes its own amplifier. So each operator can be set at different levels independently. So because I've selected operator A here, the display is now showing me all the details for controlling operator A specifically. And this is divided into to three sections. You have the mini display at the top here, and then you have the envelope controls down here, and you have oscillator controls on the right side here. The way to change the display is just you tick which one you want. So if I click on oscillator, I get a little oscillator view, and if I click on envelope, then I get the envelope view. So let's start off with the oscillator section. So the first drop down gives you a waveform picker. So 99% of the time you want to use a sine wave when you're using FM synthesis because you'll get the best results when you're modulating between the operators. But they've given you all the different waveforms you can expect like saw wave, square wave, triangle, noises. The cool thing about operator here is that there's this little graph at the top which shows you all the different harmonics in the sound. So if I pick user down here, I can actually go here and draw with my mouse all the different harmonics. So every waveform or sound can be approximated by a series of different sine waves that get added together to create that rich sound. And that's what this little box here is giving you. Each 
vertical bar represents a different sine wave at a different frequency, which is a multiple of the fundamental, which is the base frequency here. So what you're doing when you're drawing here is you're adding sine waves that are higher in pitch, but lower in volume. And the effect this has is that it changes the timbre and the richness of the sound. And you can see that expressed visually with this little waveform here. So if I play just the fundamental, we get a pure sine wave, as you can see here. And as I start adding harmonics, you can see the waveform here changing into more of a square wave. So you can create a really rich sound by just blending this all with harmonics. And effectively turning it almost into a saw wave here. And incidentally, if you pick the other ones, you can actually visualize them. So if you pick a saw wave here, you can see what the harmonic content of a saw wave would look like. On the right here, you get to choose how many of the first harmonics you want to control. So you have a choice between 16, which gives you bigger granularity here or 32, which gives you more harmonics, and up to 64, where you can start drawing like crazy shapes. And then there's a few useful shortcuts for this little screen here. If you wanna hone in on one specific bar, if you hold shift while dragging, then it'll lock your mouse to that. So even if you move your mouse left and right, it stays to control that specific level. And then in the status bar at the bottom here, you'll notice that as I mouse around, it's telling you what number of, what multiple harmonic you're over and what the level is. The other cool thing you can do is restrict it to either odd or even harmonics. If you right click here, you get to choose. If you choose even, then regardless of what you draw, it's only gonna draw in the even ones. And similarly, if I choose odd, it's only gonna draw the odd ones. So this is useful for approximating things like a square wave. And finally, if you created a complex waveform and you wanna export it, if you right click, you can export this AMS thing and that allow you to save just the waveform. All right, moving down, we have this repeat dropdown. And what this does is it, it'll actually repeat the harmonics that you're seeing here over and over again at diminishing values. And what repeat allows you to do is determine how much the additional harmonics will fade out. So if you set it to off, you're getting just one copy of the harmonics you're seeing here. And if I increase this, it's gonna start blending and repeating it at different values. So the higher you go, the more you're attenuating the upper harmonic, so it's leaving you with just the fundamental, and then you get kind of a smoother, bassier sound. Next to that, you have feedback, which is how much the oscillator modulates itself rather than modulating another oscillator. And this is only available for operators that don't have a corresponding modulator. So in this case, operator D would have that available because in this algorithm, it's all the way at the top here. Down here, you have a phase control. So if you look at the waveform, you can see the phase being offset. And then this little R thing will re-trigger the phase every time you press a key down if it's on. And then finally, you have this unique parameter where you can assign the pitch of the oscillator to the velocity or how hard or fast you're pressing down on a key. So if I turn this up here, you'll notice if I press hard, and if you have this little Q selected, which means quantize, it'll quantize it to the course knob. So it's as if the velocity is controlling this knob here. So the higher you play, you're just jumping octaves up and down. Whereas if I turn it off, then we're just getting a like smooth pitch change. So the other component of an operator is the envelope generator, which we can access via here. And the envelope is just assigned to the level of the operator. So I can change the values directly by dragging these little dots or I can set the values in here. So you have all the standard things like attack, decay, sustain, release. In addition, you can change the peak value and the initial value here. Then you can assign the overall time of the envelope to the velocity of the keyboard, and you can assign the overall level of the envelope using velocity or keyboard, the range of the keyboard. And then at the bottom, you have this loop dropdown. So this allows you to pick how the envelope loops. So if you set it to none, it doesn't loop at all. It just behaves like a standard ADSR envelope generator. If you set it to loop, then it'll loop effectively the whole position here. Kind of behaving like an LFO. If you set it to beat, then it'll also loop, but it'll loop synchronized to the tempo of the DAW. Sync is the same as beat, but it'll actually synchronize the starting point to if the actual arrangement is playing in Ableton Live, for example. And finally, you have trigger, which behaves like a single cycle uh, envelope. So when you press a key down, it'll go through all stages, regardless of how long you hold. The other three operators are identical, but they all have independent settings that you can set. And you can enable them by ticking these little boxes here. And the way to do simple FM modulation is, depending on what algorithm you have chosen, all you have to do is bring up the level of the modulator. In this case, B is set to modulate A. So if I bring this up, you'll notice a change in timbre. 
And then the two components that have to do with the timbre change are the ratio, which is the relative frequency between the modulator and the carrier or the audible oscillator, and also the level. So in this case, I can change the coarse tuning as well to change the timbre. And this is a useful way to think about FM synthesis is when you have a modulator, which is the oscillator that controls another oscillator, changing its frequency and its level will not result in a perceivable change in frequency or level. Instead, what you'll hear is a change in timbre. So the way to change timbre in an FM synth is to change the properties of the modulator. So one useful shortcut in the operator views is if you right click anywhere, you have these quick handy shortcuts for copying the properties of this operator to other operators or from other operators. So this is a good way of cloning an operator once you have certain settings set. All right, so we've covered all the operators. Let's now jump to the right side. At the top here, we have an LFO, which you can toggle with this little box here. And for the LFO, you can choose the waveform. You have all the standard stuff, square, triangle. And then the shell parameters are rate and amount. So rate is the frequency. And amount is how much of the LFO overall is getting added. This little drop down here lets you change the range of the rate knob here. So this LFO can actually go into audio rates. So if I push this to high, you can get these really, really high frequencies, which is cool if you want to modulate different parameters at audio rate. And then finally you have sync, which turns this into a beat marker so you can sync it to your DAW. And then the reset button will just reset the waveform every time a key is pressed. So since I've clicked on the LFO section, the screen now is contextual, so it's showing me details for that LFO. And similarly to the operator screen, we have all the envelope generator controls on the left, and then the LFO controls on the right. So you have two destinations that you can assign the LFO to. The first one is a combination of any of the operator frequencies, as well as the cutoff frequency of the filter. And you can toggle those independently here, and then set the amount here. <laughs> Below that, we have a second destination, and this one you can assign to anything like the oscillator properties, the filter properties, some global properties. So if I set it to panning, I can set the amount here. <laughs> and then at the bottom, you can assign the rate to the keyboard. And you can assign the amount of LFO to the velocity. Then on the left side, it's the exact same envelope generator controls that we saw for the operator, except in addition, you can set the level of the final value here, but the envelope just controls the amount of LFO. All right, moving along, below the LFO, we have the filter section, which you can toggle independently on and off here. All the standard controls, you have the filter type, low pass, high pass, including the morph at the bottom. You can set the slope here, and then different characters where clean gives you like the EQ8 filter, and these are different simulations of synths like the Oscar, the Moog, and the MS-20, which just give you different characters. And then you can set the cutoff frequency and the resonance in the shell parameter. And similarly, once you click on the filter, the screen becomes contextual to the filter. And again, it looks very similar to all the other displays we've seen. You have the envelope controls on the left, and then the filter controls on the right here. And you can switch the display by clicking these little boxes here. So you can set the cutoff and resonance directly here if you wanted to. And it's worth noting, if you pick one of these simulations, you'll unlock this filter drive parameter here, which just gives a little more edge to the filter you're using. Next to that, you have a shaper, so you can pick a different wave shaper to really kind of distort the sound if you wanted to. And once you pick those, you get the drive amount for that as well. And that has its own wet dry controls, you can blend it in here. Next to that, you can assign the cutoff frequency to both the velocity and the keyboard. And on the left, we have the exact same envelope generator controls that we've seen so far. And you can set the amount of envelope contribution to the cutoff frequency using this knob here, but the rest is all the same. So below the filter, we have this section to do with pitch control, and you have a dedicated ADSR envelope generator used to control the pitch of the different oscillators. And you can set the amount of that contribution, positive or negative, using the slider here. Spread gives you sort of a chorus effect by stacking two voices together and panning them left and right. And then the spread parameter lets you set how much detuning there is between those, creating kind of a richer sound. And then transpose sets the overall transposition in semitones of the entire synth. So if we look at the display, it looks very familiar. You have all the ADSR visual controls here, the envelope controls down here, and then some auxiliary controls here. So if we look at the auxiliary controls, the first destination allows you to set this envelope to control the frequency of any of the four operators, including the frequency of the LFO itself. 
And then there's a second destination with the same parameters that we've seen earlier, but you can use this as kind of a spare envelope generator if you wanted to. Below that we have glide, which is just portamento, and you can just turn it on here and set the amount of time it takes to slide between the notes. And again, the envelope controls on the left are identical to what we've seen so far. Just remember that some of these envelopes have a slope control by dragging this little dot, and you can toggle by clicking here if you wanna set the different values directly of the slopes. Finally, we get to the global section down here. So on the left, you see which algorithm you have selected, and I'll cover that in a sec. And then you have three parameters here. Time sets the time stretching of all the envelopes. So if you wanna kind of change all the different time aspects of the whole plugin, you can stretch that here. Tone is kind of a low pass filter in a way, and it's used to combat aliasing. Because this is a digital synth with lots of crazy modulation, you can quickly end up with artifacts and aliasing outside of the band and you can shape this to kind of accommodate for that. And then finally we have volume, which is the overall volume of the plugin here. So let's look at the display section here. At the top you have the algorithm picker, which you can just click on these little values and you can see them changing here. So if you remember at the beginning, I hinted at what an algorithm was, and it's just the way that the operators are routed to each other. Because you remember each operator can have two roles, either as a carrier or as a modulator. A carrier is the operator that you can actually hear, and the modulator is an operator that is just used to control the frequency of the carrier or of another operator. And the way these are routed together is determined by the algorithm. So each operator is color coded. So you'll notice that A is yellow, B is green, etc. And they all correspond to these little boxes here. So each box in the algorithm corresponds to an operator. And the way they're visually laid out represents signal flowing from top to bottom. So the one we have selected now is just a vertical line, which just means that orange is modulating teal, so D is modulating C, C is modulating B, and B is modulating A, and then A is audible. So the audible oscillators or the carriers are always laid out at the bottom most row. So in this case, since yellow is at the bottom, it's the only oscillator we're gonna be able to hear, whereas the others are just used to modulate each other. So you can read the chart that way, just start from the top to bottom. And you'll notice that some of them starting here, you start to get two audible operators. So in this case, both B and A are audible, and they're both have a chain of modulation coming from C and D. And you'll notice when you get to the right, you're effectively getting an additive synthesizer or even a subtractive synth where you have four audible oscillators because they're all in the bottom row, but none of them are modulating each other. So this you can use to combine different waveforms and run it through a filter and you can treat operator like a subtractive synth if you wanted to. The middle section here is all to do with assigning different MIDI parameters. So you have velocity, keyboard, aftertouch, pitch bend, and mod wheel. And for each one, you have two different destinations which you can pick from the dropdown. And we've seen these in the past. And then you set the amount. And you can do that for this whole little matrix here. At the bottom here, you have a voice selection. So you can either make it a mono synth or up to a 20 voice polysynth. Next you have retrig, so this makes it so that if a note is already playing, it'll get retriggered rather than having to allocate a new voice for it. So you can save on voices that way. Interpolation just makes the waveform smoother at the cost of CPU. And then anti-aliasing similarly will help smooth out the overall sound, but at the cost of CPU. So you can play it with this. You're always kind of trading off the quality versus CPU. Then you have the global panning of the entire plugin and you can assign panning to either the keyboard or to some random value so that the panning is kind of shifting around. All right, so that covers all the basics for operator. The only other thing worth mentioning is the little triangle here. If you press this, it'll remove the display section. So it'll make the synth more compact if you don't need all the details. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe and share it with anyone who's learning Ableton Live. And I'll see you guys in the next one.